If f of x equals 4x squared minus 5x plus 3, evaluate the following. So, sa video na to, tayo ay mag -e evaluate ng functions. Ibig sabihin, bigyan tayo ng mga values ng x na ipoplug in o substitute natin dun sa ating function. Tapos, simplify natin at subukan natin kung makakuha tayo ng finite o definite na value. So, so number 1, Evaluate this function if x is equal to 5. Paano manalaman na x is equal to 5? Kasi siya yung nandito sa loob. Sabihin, evaluate f of 5 kung ang function natin ay ito. 4x squared minus 5x plus 3. Again, it basically means, i-plug in natin si 5 sa lahat ng x dito sa ating function. Ilan ba ang x's natin dito? Pansinin na meron tayong isa at dalawang x. So, ibig sabihin, pag nirewrite natin yan, instead of writing 4x squared, it will now be 4 times 5 raised to 2 minus 5 multiplied by 5 plus 3. Nilagyan lang natin ng parentheses para alam natin na Plinog in natin yung 5. So, wala na bang ibang x? Wala na. Now, we can simplify. Unahin natin itong may exponent. Bago natin i-multiply sa 4. Ang ayon sa order of operation. Now, una yung may mga exponent. Bago yung multiplication. And yung iba pang operations. So, 5 squared. Basically, that's 5 times 5. That's going to be 25 multiplied by 4. Simplify natin yung negative 5 times 5. Magkaiba ng sign, so magiging negative ang product. 5 times 5 is 25. And then, plus 3. Pag walang nabago, retain lang natin. Let's simplify further. 4 multiplied by 25 is 100. Bawasan ng 25, tapos dagdagan ng 3. Now, since addition and subtraction na lang ang involved, ang kailangan na lang natin gawin is to go from left to right. So, unahin natin yung 100 Minus 25, that's going to be 75. Added by 3, ibig sabihin, ang value ng function natin, if x is equal to 5, ay magiging 78. That's our final answer. So number 2 naman, evaluate natin yung f of 0. Ano naman yung value ng function na to kung ang x ay equal sa 0? Same thing. Plug in natin yung 0 sa lahat ng x ng ating function. So instead of writing 4x squared, we will now have 4 times 0 squared minus 5 times 0 squared. I mean 0, 5 times 0 lang, plus 3. Then let's simplify further. 0 squared. Kahit ano pang exponent ni 0, ibig sabihin lang yan, ilang beses yung multiply si 0 sa sarili niya. So kung 2 yan, 0 times 0. Doesn't make sense kasi magiging 0 din yon. And then if you multiply 0 sa kahit anong number naman, in this example's case sa 4, magiging 0 pa rin. So this is 0. Again, 0 multiplied by any number is just 0. So this is again 0. And then plus 3. So basically kahit hindi na natin isulat yun, no? You can just cancel these terms. Kasi magiging 0 din naman sila. So ano na lang ang matitira sa atin? Yung constant na 3. Yun yung value ng function if x is equal to 0. Sa example number 3, meron na tayong fraction. Evaluate daw natin yung f of 1 fourth. Same thing, plug in natin yung 1 fourth sa lahat ng x ng ating function. So now you have 4 multiplied by 1 fourth raised to 2 minus 5 times 1 fourth added by 3. Aparehong proseso lang din naman ang gagawin. Uunahin natin yung may exponent kung meron man. Susundan nyo ng multiplication and division kung meron. Kung magkatabi, you go from left to right and then yung addition and subtractions. Ang ayon yun sa order of operations. Diba? Kung tawagin natin ay gem das. Una yung may group, parentheses, yung may exponent, Multiplication and division, and then addition and subtraction na kung magkatabi nga, you go from left to right. Nagiging tricky lang naman yan kung 
meron ng involved na, let's say, fractions. That is the time that you have to dig deep. Nari-recall pa ba natin kung paano mag-operate ng fractions? Tingnan natin. Sa example na to, ang unang kailangan gawin ay itong 1 fourth na raise, naka sa 2. Yan ang una natin dapat i-simplify. Tandaan na kapag ang fraction naka-raise sa kahit anong exponent, yung exponent basically ay kailangan mong i-distribute dun sa numerator, dun sa nasa taas ng fraction, at doon sa denominator, yung nasa baba ng fraction. So basically, kaya, ko nat kaya natin siyang i-rewrite again as 1 squared over 4 squared. And then itong minus 5 times 1 fourth naman, you multiply a whole number by a fraction, basically, mo multiply mo lang yung whole number dun sa numerator. Tapos, i-retain mo lang yung denominator. So, this is just negative 5 times 1. Any number multiplied by 1 is just the number itself. So, it's just negative 5 minus 5 over 4. Wala tayong ginawa dun, so retain lang. And then, meron tayong plus 3. Simplify natin. 4 pa rin yung nasa labas, pero yung 1 squared, big sabihin niyan 1 times 1. Hindi 1 times 2, kundi 1 multiplied by itself twice. So, 1 times 1 is 1. 4 times 2, yun yung ibig sabihin ng 4 squared. Yan naman ay magiging 16. Meron pa rin tayong minus 5 over 4 plus 3. Simplify natin. Again, may whole number na multiply sa fraction. So, it's just 4 times 1. Tapos, may denominator na 16. The good thing is that we can simplify that. Diba? 4 over 16 can be simplified as 1 fourth. Kasi yun yung greatest common factor ng 4 at saka 16. Yung 4. So, ilang 4 meron sa 4? Merong isa. Ilang 4 meron sa 16? Apat. So, simplify na natin siya as 1 fourth. Then, meron tayong 5 fourths added by 3. Simplify natin itong fractions. Dahil similar fractions sila, pwede na natin silang isubtract. So, 1 minus 5 basically is going to be negative 4 over 4. Anything divided by itself is 1. Pero dahil negative yon, pwede kong i-rewrite na lang yan as negative 1 plus 3, which can then be simplified as negative 1 added by 3 is just going to be positive 2. Ayan yung value ng function natin if x is equal to 1 fourth. So number 4, medyo mas magiging tricky na tayo. Bukod sa fraction siya, meron pa tayong nakikitang radical sign dun sa numerator. Pero huwag tayo ma-intimidate. Try muna natin i-apply yung mga dati na nating alam. So, alam natin na we are asked to evaluate f of square root of 2 over 2 kung ganito ang itsura ng function natin. Same thing, plug in lang natin yung square root of 2 over 2 sa lahat ng x ng function. So, we have 4 multiplied by root 2 over 2 squared minus 5 multiplied by root 2 over 2 added by 3. Simplify natin. Again, yung may exponent. In this example's case, square root of 2 over 2. Kagaya ng ginawa ko dito, dinistribute ko yung exponent sa fraction. Ganun yung gagawin natin every time merong fraction na nakaray sa exponent. Distribute yung exponent sa numerator and denominator. Which means, yung exponent na 2 dito ay para kay square root of 2 at para kay positive 2. So, kung i-rewrite siya, this is going to be square root of 2 squared At, ang magandang bagay doon, sa tuwing merong square root na naka sa exponent na 2, naka-cancel out yung radical sign. And, kasi pwede nating i-rewrite yung square root of 2 as 2 raised to 1 half. And then, kapag may exponent ka, multiply mo siya doon sa exponent niya, 1 half times 2 is just 1. So, kung 2 yan na naka sa 1, it's just going to be 2. Or, Sa so, madaling sabi, i-cancel mo yung radical sign. Sa tuwing may exponent na 2. So, ano yung matitira? Meron na lang tayong 2. 
The denominator, that's 2 raised to 2 or 2 squared. Again, that's 2 multiplied by itself twice. So, magiging 4 yun. Mayan na natin yung simplify. Punta mo na natin yung sumunod na term. This is negative 5 multiplied by square root of 2 over 2. Again, kapag may fraction na may multiply sa whole number, yung whole number, multiply mo lang sa denominator. Right? And since ito ay radical, wala, ka, wala tayo ganong magagawa dyan, kundi pagtabihin sila. Ayun yung magiging product ni negative 5 at saka ni square root of 2. Negative 5, square root of 2. Pero yung denominator, wala tayong ginawa dyan, so retain. Pati yung constant na 3. Then, let's simplify further. Yung 2 fourths, pwedeng isimplify yan as 1 half. So, now we have 4 multiplied by 1 half. Again, whole number na may multiply sa fraction, so this is just 4 times 1 divided by 2. Or, pwede kong isulat na lang na 2. Ano na lang matitira sa atin dito? Actually, hindi 2. Pakita ko ulit. 4 times 1 fourth. Actually, 1 half. Yan. 4 times 1 is 4 divided by 2. Tama. 2 pala. <laughs> Niisip ko 4 divided by 4 is 1. Magiging 2 pala talaga. This is actually 2 minus 5 root 2 over 2 plus 3. Now, in this example's case, wala naman tayo ganong magagawa dito sa negative 5 square root of 2 over 2. Pero, pwede natin pagsamahin yung dalawang constant. Means, we now have negative 5 square root of 2 over 2, then 2 plus 3 positive 5. Any I think final answer. Any value ng function if x is equal to square root of 2 over 2. Last example tayo for this video. Evaluate f of x plus 1. Ito medyo weird tingnan kasi sa mga previous examples natin, lahat ng value ng x ay constant. ba? Whole number man of fraction. Basta, pa-plug in lang natin sa lahat ng value ng x. In this example's case, again, medyo intimidating kasi may variable. Pero, we apply the same idea. Papalitin natin lahat ng x dito sa given by what's, whatever is inside this parentheses. So now we have 4 multiplied by x plus 1 squared minus 5 multiplied by x plus 1. Added by 3. And same thing. Unahin lang natin yung may exponent. Again, anong trabaho ni exponent? Sabihin kung ilang beses multiply yung base sa kanyang sarili. Which means, this is actually x plus 1 multiplied by itself. Pwede ko yung gawin sa part na to. x plus 1 times x plus 1. This is a binomial multiplied by another binomial. Kung alam mo yung itsura ng perfect square trinomial, you can just go ahead and write the product. Pero kung hindi, pwede mong imano-mano. Mag-foil method ka. So, multiply mo yung x dun sa x. x, multiply sa 1. Anong din naman yung 1, multiply mo sa x. At si 1, multiply mo sa 1. Taisay natin. x times x is x squared. So, isulat ko muna yung 4. Wala pa akong ginagawa dyan. x squared. And then, x times 1 is just x. Positive yon So, lagay ko plus x. And then, 1 times x. Again, another positive x. And then, 1 times 1 is just positive 1. And then, yung negative 5 times x plus 1, distribute lang yan. Negative 5 times x and negative 5 times positive 1. Negative 5 times x is negative 5x. And then, yung negative 5 times 1 is just negative 5. Then, yung constant na 3, mamaya na natin i-simplify, pero isulat na natin. Sumunod natin i-distribute yung 4 dito sa trinomial natin. Pero, we can notice that we can also simplify this. Pwede kong i-combine yung dalawang x doon. Pwede kong i-rewrite to as 2x. Hindi magiging x squared yan. Nagiging x squared kung nagmumultiply ka. Pero, kung 
Nag-add ka lang, magiging 2x. So now we have 4 multiplied by x squared, 4 multiplied by 2x, and then 4 multiplied by 1. Taisay natin, 4 times x squared is 4x squared. 4 times 2x is 4 times 2 multiplied by x. So that's going to be positive 8x. Then 4 times 1 is just 4. Positive yun sa lagay mo ng plus. Then, sinda ng minus 5x. Notice na yung constant. Kaya natin pagsamahin. Negative 5 plus 3 is just going to be negative 2. Meron pa ba tayong ibang pwedeng isimplify? Yes. Pwede natin pagsamahin yung like terms. Yung neg positive 8x and negative 5x. So, i-rewrite natin. This is going to be 4x squared. X. Um... Press x yan, so alam ko na magiging x yung base. Pero yung 8 minus 5, mag-operate ka na. 8 minus 5 is positive 3. Same thing sa constants natin. Maroon tayong 4 minus 2 is just going to be positive 2. At ito na yung magiging sagot natin. Again, medyo weird siya kasi hindi siya naging constant. No? Hindi siya finite na value. Pero... So, ano man yung ipapalit mo dito sa x, ayos lang yon hindi na natin problema. Basically, naglagay lang tayo ng expression sa loob ng isa pang function. No? Sa ibang topic, ang tawag na dito ay composition of function. But you get the idea. You replace the variable na uh, kung given ay x, you replace x sa kung ano man yung nasa loob ng parentheses. And then, you simplify by applying what you have learned before. Now, it's your turn. Can you do this? Evaluate the following and then let me know in the comments kung ano makuha mong mga sagot o may bahagi ng video na to na hindi mo ganong naunawaan. Thank you so much for watching this video.